In this screen test, I want to talk a little bit about the structure of solutions, particularly to linear equations. And that's what we're going to focus on almost entirely throughout this course. Uh, and so this idea is going to come up again and again, but I'm going to introduce it now in, you know, in the, uh, in the context of first order equations because it's simplest to see here. And we've already seen an example when we solved the, uh, the example using method of integrating factors. So um, let's just re recall that equation. We found that the equation um, ty prime plus two y equal four t squared had a solution y of t equal t squared plus c over t squared. So how did this come about? We have some particular structure here. There's a t squared term here and a c over t squared here. So let me flip back to that example. And if you haven't watched this video on the method of integrating factors, the um, method and example, um, go take a look at that and you can see how I went through all this. Um, but when you look at, oh, did I forget a four? No, I got that right. Um, so what you can see here is that the t squared in the solution down here, that came out of this t to the four, which came out of the four t cubed, and the four t cubed came originally from a four t squared up here. So this part of the solution, the t squared part, arose from the inhomogeneous term. And the c times t squared, or c divided by t squared, was just based on the right-hand side. The, sorry, the left-hand side. And what I mean by that is if I had the equation ty prime plus 2y equals 0, the t squared in that solution above would, in this case, be gone. So I would just have y of t equals c over t squared. So because the c over t squared is a solution to the homogeneous version of this equation, we call this y h of t, the homogeneous solution. Oops. And we call the other piece, t squared, a particular solution. And that particular solution will change as we change the g of t, the inhomogeneous term on the right-hand side. And now this is a general feature of all homogeneous and inhomogeneous linear equations. We'll have a particular solution that comes from the inhomogeneous part and a homogeneous solution that comes from the homogeneous equation. And it's the homogeneous solution that gives us the whole family of solutions. So if I were to ask you to sketch this whole family of solutions, the easiest way for me to do this is to draw two pictures. One is the particular solution, and that's usually the one I would start with. So this is going to be t squared here and t here. And then I would draw the c over t squared. Now c over t squared, if c is positive, that just looks like a thing like this that decays off to zero. And this is c over t squared. And if you make c smaller, you still have those asymptotes all at the origin. And if c is negative, then you get things that look like this down below the axis here, the t-axis. Okay, so if I'm gonna add these guys to this picture, what I'm doing is I'm going to have an infinite thing added right near the origin. And as time goes on, it gets closer, the thing that I'm adding gets closer and closer to zero. So what that means is near the origin, I'm gonna have a huge thing added, but that what I'm adding to t, t squared is gonna get smaller and smaller and eventually go to zero so that all the solutions are gonna look just like 
t squared. And if I had a negative c value, I would have a negative asymptote being added to the t squared. And as time goes on, it would get closer and closer to t squared because the thing I'm adding would get closer and closer to zero. And so you can fill in all these solutions and they all converge down to t squared eventually. Okay, so let me, uh, let me show you what that looks like in Desmos, which is a nice graphing tool that I encourage you guys to use if you don't already know about it. So I will switch over to Desmos and we can see. So here's Desmos. Let's enter our function. So y equal. Now, uh, we were dealing with a function of t before, but Desmos really seems to prefer x's and y's. So I'm going to redefine our function as a function of x. So it was x squared plus constant multiplied by x squared. Sorry, divided by x squared. And, uh, oh, so it asked me if I wanted to create a parameter c, and there it is. c is equal to 1, but I can slide it back and forth, and that'll change what the um, function looks like. And now I want to also put in, for comparison, I want to put in the x squared function. And there it is. Okay, so I'm actually going to put in a few of these. So let's put in, uh, and then I'm going to make, instead of c, I'm going to have c plus 1. And then I'll make another one that is c minus 1, just so we can see a little bit of variety uh, of c values. And now as I slide it, you can see what they all do. And they're doing pretty much what I described uh, before. So let me also put in y equal 1 over x squared. And we can see, I'm not going to keep that in for very long because that's kind of confusing. But you can see that um, near the origin, the c over x squared adds this huge spike to all the functions. It's either an upward going spike or a downward going spike. That came from the c over x squared. And once the c over x squared dies off, you can see the green function goes to zero. All the functions, all the solutions are going to get close to the purple, which is the particular solution. Okay, so this is really uh, the generic structure of, of uh, solutions to first order equations. It's going to be some particular function and then a whole family of functions gets added to it. And in this case, you can see that there's distinct behaviors. Um, but uh, in the end, all of them end up looking just like t squared going off to infinity. Okay, so we will see that structure appear again and again throughout the course.